Once the endovenous laser or thermoablation catheter is actually in the great saphenous vein, we get the vascular technologist to look at the saphenofemoral junction in detail in the longitudinal section. Now, this is one of the reasons why it's essential to have two people doing this. In the past, we've had surgeons who have tried to do it all by themselves, or radiologists. And the trouble with that is, if you don't have control of the catheter throughout this, you can actually misplace it, or it can slip during the tumescence placing period. So it's essential to have two people performing this if you want to get good results with minimal patient problems. What we do now is we introduce the catheter all the way up through the saphenofemoral junction. Sometimes, like here, it's gone across. Sometimes it goes up the inferior epigastric vein. At this point, we're into the deep vein, so we now come back and we watch the end of the catheter flip upwards. And it's that flip up just there. I'll do it again. As it comes up, it flips up, and you know you're into the hood of the sphenofemoral junction. And this is radial firing, so we're going to bring just a little bit back there so we can see it's exactly where we want to start treating, leaving only the smallest hood, if any at all. And usually, when we see this post operatively, that will come down to a flush uh, ligation, such, although, of course, it's flush ablation. Now, with the older catheters that are end firing, you mustn't do this. Because you can have up to two centimeters destruction, you'd now have to come back two centimeters and you'd actually position it about here and you'd have some sort of guesswork as to how far forward the vein would be ablated. This is why we prefer the radial firing system where we can actually go right up to here with confidence that we're not going to actually cause a thrombus distal, uh, proximal to that and we're not going to destroy any other matter in front of the laser, but only to the sides.